Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. This one's going to be very quick and very short. The last tutorial I did, which is about sound and music, was very well received and someone even wrote a really nice article about it. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. But in it he references a game where uh, the, the author of the game uses like some certain physical components to generate sound kind of on the fly and dynamically. And I wanted to demonstrate how you could do this in Unity and very quickly. It's going to be just, just a couple of minutes to do this sort of thing. I've got a brand new project I'm just going to drop a cube in here and I'm going to use this as a piano key so here's a cube I'm just going to center it and I'm gonna make it a little longer this way so it kind of looks like piano key I'll also have to drop in a light I suppose like so and I'm just gonna shove it out of the way it's a directional light doesn't matter where it is and then our camera I'm gonna move it up this way and up this way and then aim it downwards Ooh. Um, probably more like a 30 and then move it up a little higher. There we go. Kind of looks like a piano key there. Now I've also gone to a site that has some free Creative Commons sounds on it and I downloaded a sound file for what is supposed to be a middle C on a piano. Now I don't know anything about music so I'm just gonna have to kind of take their words for it but it sounds fine. There we go. Sounds Sounds lovely to me. So someone re record an actual piano note. And what we're going to want to do is make it so that this note plays when we click on this key. Very, very easy to do. Well, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this cube. I'm going to rename it piano key. And I'm also going to bring it into my project over here to make it into a prefab. And then I'm going to attach this sound file to the piano key so that creates the audio source over here and now if I play the game because play on awake is there it'll play the sound there we go it's gonna be a little quieter than when I was playing it manually because it's positioned in 3d and there's a little bit of distance from the camera but it sounds okay to me now we don't want it to play just when we hit play we want it to play when we click on the key so we're going to need a script so let's go and create a C sharp script we're gonna call this the piano key script and we're gonna open that in mono develop now this is going to be very simple. We're just going to create a com uh, callback for on mouse down when we click on the object. We're just going to call the audio source and we're going to tell it to play. By default, audio is linked to any audio source that you have attached to your piano key, which we do. We just have to attach the script itself. And now if we, on the piano key, let's turn off play on awake, hit play. So now we shouldn't get any sound. Okay, now it's running and we'll just click on the key. Very nice. Now we have a single key piano, which obviously is not going to play a whole lot of music. We want to be able to put multiple keys in here. Now, we could go and download a bunch of different sound files, one for every note on the piano, in which case we'd have, what, 88 notes plus however many black keys are on the piano, which I don't know. I don't know anything about music. Um, and then we'd have lots and lots and lots of sound files to manage and our application would be huge. But, you know, we don't need perfect fidelity. We only need, we could just play this one note but change the pitch. Well, what if we did that? So we've got a pitch controller here. Let's, for example, let me crank it up a little bit and then play. Much higher pitch. And if I drop this down, oh yeah, it doesn't change it here for some reason. I have to stop the application and then restart it and it should see, much lower. I don't know why this, oh, because I'm changing, nah, that's why. I'm changing it on the prefab, which is not what I want. Let me change this back to a one. And then on the piano key in my hierarchy, I should be able to change this dynamically. Normal note, higher note, very low note. Oops, too low. There it is. And then we'll stop it, it'll go back to one in our prefab. So that's what we want to do. We want to create a series of these bad boys and have them each play at a slightly different pitch so that we get the proper range on our keyboard. So we're gonna go back to our script for this. Now, in the audio controller, there's something called audio.pitch, as we saw in the inspector. It defaults to a one, the one is the normal speed. So if we wanna play it slightly faster in a slightly higher pitch, we could go something like this, because it's a float, and again, uh, oh, we actually have to, specify that it's a float as opposed to a double. Play this and now it should be slightly higher. Just a little bit. But we want to play this not just arbitrarily. I mean what's the right number for one note higher? Right? How do you go from this is a C, how do we go from a C to a D? 
Well, it turns out this is all mathematical and very numeric, and I had to look it up because I didn't really know. Um, but a certain key resonates at a certain frequency. A middle A is 440 hertz. And then everything above and beyond that is slightly higher or slightly lower. And by how much? Well, there's a formula which is basically, um, let's use the, the actual functions here, the math power, right? So if I put in this 2f, comma 2f. This is this would be 2 to the power of 2. In other words, this would return 4. So if I put in 2 to the power of 0, of course, that's going to return a 1, which means this is going to be my base pitch. There is something I can put in here that is exactly one note higher, or rather half a note. We're going to go by semitones, and that is by 1 12th of a power. So 0, so this is squared, this is the base, this would return 2, this will return 1, and if I went to 1 half, this would actually be the square root of 2. This would be the cube root, the fourth root, and so on. We want the twelfth root. The twelfth root is a half a note, or 2, this would be 2 semitones, this would be 2 halves of a note, this would be a full note. Of course, I could go 1 over 6, but generally speaking, you, you want the sort of um, control that half notes come, because this allows you to do a sharp. So if this, this will be our base, this will be, um, let me go and make sure these are floats. This would be my C, this would be my basic note, this would return a pitch of 1. If I went to this, this would be a C sharp, and this would be a D. Okay, clear as mud, hopefully, we'll see. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do a public float. I'm going to call it um, semitone offset. I'm going to make it default to zero. I'm going to stick that right in here, semitone offset. And now if I go back over here and I take a look at my prefab and the script, there's a semitone offset field here, which is great. So in my game world, I'm going to go, I'm going to duplicate my object. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to grab both these guys again. I'm going to duplicate them, move them over here. I'll grab this whole set. Uh, do I have a light in here? So, no, okay. Duplicate and move them there. And then I'm going to kind of center the whole thing ish. Actually, you know what? Let's just go with uh, whatever. This will be fine. Uh, it's actually a little too wide for this, but that's okay. There we go. Do something like that and then center these a little bit better. There. I'm just eyeballing it, but it should be fine. So we're going to use this note here, the third from the left, as our C. And then we're going to go one over, and this is going to be our B note, which, I mean, again, my actual math on this and my understanding of music may be off, and certainly don't be shy to correct me if that's the case. But we're going to do, so this is our zero. Then we're going to go minus two, minus four. So these are going to be higher notes. Uh, sorry, lower notes. And then we're going to go over to the right here. So this is our zero. This is going to be plus two. So this should be a D. This should be plus four. This should be the E. Uh, six. Eight. Ten. So now we should have a piano that plays a bunch of different notes. Oops, that's not what I meant to hit. Let's hit play. This is our basic note right here. Sounds right. Oops, I missed a key. There we are, and we have a bunch of notes. Now, I'm going to clean up the code slightly differently. I'm just going to move this. Instead of being on mouse, I'm going to put it in a play note. Whoops, like that. And on mouse down is simply going to call play note. Now, why did I do that? Well, we could trigger this note a billion different ways. For example, what if we had on collision enter play note? Now, what we could do is we could create a ball that rolls across the keyboard and hits all the notes. Let's, let's do that really quickly. I actually wasn't intending to go quite this far in the tutorial, but that sounds like fun, actually. So let me create a, I'm just going to create a cube to use as a ramp. Um, let me just center it for now, and then um, I'm going to increase the size to about 3 by 3. I'm going to drag it over onto the left side here. 
I'm going to rotate it around the uh, Z axis, uh, let's say 45 degrees, oops, negative 45, and then I'm just gonna bring it up like so. And then let me drop a ball on top of this. Uh, we want a game object, sphere, gonna drag it, drag it over this way, make sure that in the Z axis it is centered on zero. Bring it right over here, and then I'm going to make this a rigid body. So now it's going to be affected by gravity. Oh, apparently my game is currently running. Hey, check it out. I'm awesome. Uh, is that going to keep those objects? No, of course not. Uh, I could have if I'd copied and pasted. I didn't realize my game was still running. But there you go. There's, there's the proof is in the pudding, guys. And can you imagine all sorts of really interesting physics-based games that you could do where sound happens as you move? You could have your character walk across this keyboard. You could play uh, Tom Hanks in the movie Big. You can do all kinds of things. That's it. That's all. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, the files I will put down in the description box down below. See ya.